Good evening. Praise God. Uh, this is the Reverend Gregory Isaacs uh, coming to you from our home. And uh, we just want to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and give thanks for all of God's grace and mercy that is within me. I'm just kind of waiting to see who might pop up first on, on the screen before I read scripture and before I bring it to my mother is the first one. Hallelujah. Hello, Mother. How you doing out there? Uh, she popped right up. <clears throat> There'll be others, I'm sure, as we go through this. And those that don't get on live, they can pick it up uh, at a later time and uh, view it many, many times. God is still blessing through all of this that uh, we're going through today. I had the privilege this morning of being on, on a Zoom call with the state council. And uh, the state council, uh, as we begin to pray and pray one for another, and uh, man, they prayed for me, and I, I have had a great day in the Lord. I uh, felt the strength of God, uh, peace of God, the love of God. Man, I've just felt God all day long. Such a beautiful day. Uh, the weather's been perfect. Uh, even got in a good walk today, good exercise, and we're just giving thanks unto the Lord for the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I shared with you last week that I would give you something this week uh, that would help us, help us to pray. How's Pam doing out there tonight? Mike and your family, hope you're all doing well. And I'm going to be reading from <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. There's Dave and Jackie Hudson just popped on. And uh, some of you may be sharing this and going to share it in a watch party. Uh, so that, that's another reason I'm giving you just, just a moment before we really, really get into this thing. Hello, Jessica and uh, Tanya Ballard. And uh, we're just thanking God for all you that's coming online with us. I've been teaching you and sharing on, on, the, on the subject of prayer and how that God has given me in the last few weeks that burden for the Lord's Prayer. And even while we were walking today, I was reciting the Lord's Prayer and touching the Lord and the Lord touching me and and believing that God is still in total control. You know what, when we pray, and I was meditating this as we walked, when we pray, there's something special about the prayers of the saints of God. Uh, we, as a church, we're always praying. And I mean that literally, you, your mind, your heart, your soul. Everything that's within you is in relationship to God and in relationship to Jesus Christ. And we know as a church, we're, we're always praying. Uh, first of all, we know that we're praying for the lost. And that's what we're told in the Word of God, that we're to pray for those who do not have that relationship with Jesus but we're also to pray one for another. And that's where I want to, where I want to go tonight. When we talk about prayer, and I, I've thought about this a lot. We, we have those, and I told you the first night that I was on here on Wednesday night that uh, we're to find a prayer closet. And when we find that prayer closet, we're to pray. And we're to get in that closet, and we're to get along with God, and and uh, we can praise God in that closet. We can petition God in that closet. Or we can just sit there and not say anything and just meditate and let God begin to speak to us. During this time, it's very important that you find that private place of prayer. And each one of you, I'm sure you've, you've found that and you're, you're, you're working on that. So we know there's that private time of prayer, and even Jesus himself, those that was with him, and I was just reading today that uh, occasionally uh, he would leave them behind and he would go out a little farther, and when he'd go out, he'd begin to pray. 
And uh, one scripture that I read today said that he went out and one time and he prayed, he prayed all night long. How's the how's Thelma Wheeler doing tonight? Tried to call you today and uh, rung your room, but it did not did not go through. And uh, let's let's just bow our head tonight and let's just pray uh, for those who still needing a healing from God and those who are still going through some struggles and uh, some in great need. So let's just bow our head and let, let's pray together before we go too much farther right here. And uh, let's just believe God. Father, I thank you today. And I come to you tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And I just ask you, Lord, tonight for those, God, that right now are watching. And for those who's going to watch in the next little bit, God, in the next day or two, there'll be some that'll even be watching through the week and, and through the weekend, God. And I, I'm just praying tonight, Lord, as you've already answered prayer, you've already blessed some, God, and uh, you're, you're going to continue to do that. But Lord, what I'm asking tonight, that you put your hand upon us, and we need the touch of God upon our lives, Lord, for healing, for miracles, for everything, God, you're capable of doing for the child of God. And we're just asking this in Jesus' name, and we know the Bible says if we ask in the name of Jesus, we know the authority of that name, the blood of Jesus Christ, the power in the blood, and the power in the Son of God tonight. We just believe it, we just trust it, and we exercise in Him tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, what I do believe... And uh, what, what, I, what I trust God for, that uh, that time of prayer that we have, and again, I told you we as a church, we are always praying for the lost. There are those times that we come together and we come in corporate prayer, not just private time in the altar or private time in our closets, but that time when we come together and we begin to rejoice together, and we pray openly in the sanctuaries or wherever we may be gathered together. And I tell you, when we pray, and we're assured in the Word of God that when we pray, He is there, amen. Jesus is there when we pray. His ears are always open to the prayers of the saint of God. God's ears are open also. Their ears are never closed, amen. They always hear. They always hear our prayers. So when we have that time of corporate prayer and lifting up and praising and magnifying and, and worship, amen, God is always there, amen. And he's in our midst and he's in our midst in our presence. Right now, God is in our very presence as I, as I speak to you. We are told in the Bible that we are always to pray. We, we know that as a child of God. We pray for the sinner. We pray for the world in which we live. We pray for those who have not been enlightened to the word or enlightened to the Lord. Or maybe they were at one time and, and they withdraw from God and they, they've lost that relationship. I've told you before, there's a lot of people praying now that wasn't praying before that we become into this lockdown. Now, in Colossians chapter 1, Verse number three, the Bible tells us that we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Now, in the beginning, he, he began to give them a, a greeting, and that greeting was to the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ, which were at Colossae. He said, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this was the action of Paul himself. When he gave thanks to God and the Father, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. When we go over into verse number nine, now what I want to share with you, we pray for the world, we pray for the lost, 
that the lost would come to Jesus. But man, let me tell you something. There's nothing like a saint of God praying for another saint of God. Now, as I get farther into this, I'm going to share with you that my father, when I first went into the ministry, my father told me, he said, when you pray, he said, you always pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He said, if you get to the place that you don't know what to pray or you don't know how to pray, he said, you always pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Keep those three things in your spirit tonight. Paul gave thanks unto them, and he gave thanks unto God for them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we begin to pray one for another, child of God praying for child of God. Sometime back, I was at church and I just finished ministering and I came down like I always do, and, and I, I stepped into the, to the aisle, and somebody came up to me, and they said, Pastor, this is what we need. And I, they gave me a piece of paper, and I took that piece of paper, and I just kind of read over it briefly, and I thought, man, this, this is good. And I, I, just, I just folded it up, and this is exactly what it looks like. I folded it up just like that. Put it in my shirt pocket, brought it home, and uh, somehow it got on my dresser in my bedroom. And uh, just maybe a week ago, I was cleaning off my dresser. And uh, I picked up this paper, and I'd put some phone numbers on the back of it. And I'd put some names on the back of it. And I thought, what is in this? And I opened it up, and sure enough, there were seven, seven things on this paper and it started out how to pray for other Christians. Now we're big on praying for the lost. Man, we always pray for the lost. God help the lost. God save the lost. Renew the backslider's heart and bring them back to you, God. I pray. But you know what? When we pray one for another, and this morning I told you about that prayer that I received, and man, it was wonderful. It was men of God on the state council that began to pray for me and my wife. And I felt the power and the presence of power. I know what power of prayer is all about. I know, I know what it's all about. And there it was in, in, in verse number three. The first thing we need to pray for when we pray for one another, and I'm telling you, during this season, during this time, I've had more people that's text me, pray for me, pray for us, pray for ours. Pray, pray, pray. And you know what? It, it's went the same way. Everybody I've talked to, I've, I've asked them to pray for us. We on Facebook and we within the body of Christ, we, we pray one for another. And as I see your names pop up here, I'm going to tell you, you'll be in my prayers. Matter of fact, you you not be in my prayers tonight. You've already been in my prayers, and I'm watching the names as, as they scroll up. You have been in my prayers, trust me. In the presence of God, you have been in my prayers. I've called your names. i prayed for your families. i prayed, I prayed for you. And I'm sure it's, I'm the recipient of that also. You have prayed for me. You've prayed for my wife. You have prayed for our family. But the first thing Paul says that we're to do, we're to be thankful for the faith, and not only for their faith, but they have been changed. Now, when we look up in the Bible, Paul said in verse number three, he gave those thanks. And he gave thanks for their faith since he had heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And the love, praise God for love. Don't you love one another tonight in Christ? 
which you have, and I love this, toward or to all saints. Now he goes over in verse number nine. And he says, for this cause. And when I looked about that, I thought, what cause is he talking about? When you go over into verse number four, this is the cause. It was because of their faith they had in Christ. For the hope that they had, which is laid for them in heaven, whereof he said, you've heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is unto all, all the world. And bringing forth, and this is the cause, he's thankful for them, for their bringing forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God and in truth. My goodness, let me tell you something. Paul had a lot to be thankful for for, for, the, for the Colossians here as, as, as he heard about their faith and, and he heard about their growth and he heard about the fruit that they were bearing. You know, that's another thing. God, God requires that you and I, we bear the fruit of the Spirit and we may, we may get into that somewhere down the road. But let me tell you something. In verse number one and nine, Here's the second thing we pray for when we pray for one another. Ask God, ask God to give them and to help them know what he wants them to do. For he said, for this cause, we also since the day we heard of it, heard of their faith, their trust, their love, and their fruit. Do not cease to pray for you. Praise God. Don't let up. And to desire that you might be filled with, here it is, the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That third thing we pray for the saints of God is for that deep spiritual understanding. First of all, we pray one for another and God has a will for each one of us. And I think I shared that with you a week or two ago that God's will for your life and my life and, and he has a will for everyone. That we would understand what the will of God is for our lives. First of all, we know what it is that we follow him, we worship him, we have a relationship with him. But there's other, other things that God will require of each one of us when it comes to his will for our life. But we are to pray for the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's, that's in verse, verse number nine. So we want to know that we're thankful and we pray that God has changed their life we pray that God is faithful, that he has given us faith. And you, and you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. And uh, I wrote something down here that, uh, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we, we, we know that, we've understood that, that uh, God builds our faith and, and our faith becomes strong. And right now, we need that strong faith from child of God. We need that strong faith in a God that can do anything. And we're still trusting that God, God's going to do something great, do something great in this. Then we come to verse number 10. And I love this one. And we need to all take notice of this. That you might walk worthy of the Lord worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge, the knowledge of God. Now I'm beginning to understand why my dad said wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It took me a while, but I, I got there. I got there. Trust me, I got there. 
So we're to ask God to help brothers and sisters. Help them to live for him. You know, the trial of our faith, and when we, we talked about this. The trials that we go through every day. And you know, the devil, and the Bible says, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his tactic. That's what he wants to do. That, 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 that's all he's good for, is to come to bring discouragement, to bring situations into your life, stumbling blocks before you that would hinder your prayer. But we got to keep on praying. We got to keep on keeping the faith. I had one elderly guy in my first church, and I see Cheryl Ridge on here, and uh, she was out of my first church. And uh, this guy, he would stand up and he would testify. And he'd say, Pastor, I have got to keep on keeping on, amen. And the man, when he'd say that, he, just something would just kind of go all through me. And I, I know what it was. And he would just keep that. That was his testimony. I've got to keep on keeping on, amen. And you know what? That's exactly what we got to do. No matter what the situation around us, no matter what the enemy throws at us, we got to keep on keeping on bringing ourselves in line with God, doing the will of God, knowing the will of God, and uh, loving one another and trusting in his grace and his mercy. That's, that's what we do. So we've, we've got to ask God to help men and women to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. And you know what? When you work worthy unto the Lord and you're pleasing to God, see my cousin Van Smith on there, good, good, good to see from you, Van. We've got to know, we've got to trust that when we're all pleasing unto the Lord, we will be fruitful, amen. And we know the fruit of the Spirit. We know what the fruit and bringing forth the fruit to the life of a Christian. Number five, we've got to pray. In that number 10 verse again, we've got to ask God to give our fellow brothers and sisters more knowledge, knowledge. And I, I, could, I, could, I could really go, go off here. Uh, when you buy something new, there, there comes an instruction book with it. That instruction book is full of knowledge. And as you read that, you begin to get an understanding of how this thing goes together, how this thing is supposed to work. Well, let me tell you something. The knowledge that we gain from the world, and I'm not talking about the knowledge outside of what we get from those things and those, those pamphlets, but what we've got to understand that we pray one for another, that God would give each of us as we pray for the Christian, the child of God, that God would give us more knowledge of himself, more knowledge of God. Man, we need, we need more knowledge of God. Then we come into verse number 11. And he says, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering and joyfulness. My goodness, ain't that, ain't that a mouthful? But I'm gonna tell you, that's exactly what it is. We pray for God's people. We pray for the church that God give them strength for the endurance. We are not in a sprint, but it's unto those who endure to the end to those who endure to the end. Also in that verse number 11, we ask God in our prayer for the child of God, for the church, for the Christian, we ask God to fill them. And you know what? This, this is very important here. That God fill us with joy. And you, we used to sing a song, and we can still sing it occasionally. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Man, I'm taking some of you way back there now. <laughs> joy unspeakable 
and full of glory. We know the writer said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Praise God. Pray that God fill your brothers and sisters with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That God give us strength and that strength that comes from him. And buddy, when God undergirds you and when God lifts you up and God wraps you in his presence, Nothing like it. Nothing like the strength of the Lord. And pray that God would fill them, not only with his strength and his joy, but God would fill them with thankfulness, that they would be thankful unto God and thankful for your brothers and your sisters. Thankful for the church. Thank you, God. For every brother I have and every sister I have, no matter what the denomination, thank you, thank you, thank you for my brothers and sisters. Can you just imagine how many people in your life and every one of us, we represent a lot of people, trust me. We touch a lot, a lot of people. You've got friends, You've got co-workers, you've got neighbors, you, you've got family. Every one of us, how many people in our life could be touched if we pray in this way? Help them, God, to know what to do. What you want them to do in these last days. God, give them a deep spiritual understanding. Help them, God, to live, to live for you. And give them more knowledge. And God, this is our prayer. Give us more knowledge of you. Give us more understanding of your word. Give us more understanding of the Holy Spirit that you have placed within our lives, the child of God. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters tonight that this is not an easy season that we're going through right now, being separated from one another as far as the building. But you know what? We are not separated in the spirit. Can you say amen? We are not separated in the Spirit. And God, give us a, a strength for the endurance that we can hold on. And we know we can hold on because, God, you're with us. You lead us, you guide us, you direct us through the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells within us tonight. And we just give you thanks we give you praise, and we give you honor tonight in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, as I have spoke to the saints of God, and yes, Lord, we do pray one for another, but these are some very specific things that we need to pray one to the other. And God, when somebody says, pray for me, and this, this will be a model prayer, for their lives, God. Not only will it help us when we pray for them, but God, it will help them when they receive the prayers from the saints of God, from the church, from the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for every man and every woman that's exercised faith and confessed with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believed in their heart that you raised him from the dead, and today he's alive and he's sitting at your right hand as our intercessor this very moment. And God, I'm so thankful that your ears are always open to the cry of the sinner man or the sinner woman. Your ears are never close to that. And you've told us in your word, in no way will you ever turn them away. When a man or a woman prays that prayer of repentance. And I'm just praying, God, when people that are lost see this and they, they may get a hold of this, 
that they will repent and call upon the name, the name of the Lord. Now, God, for the church and for the child of God, I pray these things that I've prayed and I've asked. As Paul shared with the Colossians here, we share one with another. I ask you, God, for all these things that I've mentioned tonight, right now in the name of Jesus, grant it to my brothers and my sisters that have ears to hear tonight. And I so give you thanks and I give you praise and I give you honor. And everybody says, amen and amen and amen. I will be bringing the word Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, Lawrence Church of God Facebook page. 11 o'clock, I'm sorry. We <laughs> Forgive me, 11 o'clock. I've got you on that uh, daylight savings time there. 11 o'clock Sunday morning. We'll be on Facebook Live and also on YouTube and Vimeo. God bless you. Until we see you again, may God richly bless you. Continue to pray, praying one for another. And everybody says, amen and amen and amen. God bless you tonight.